to get out of bed. Identify. I have decided I'm an emotional mess. <laughs> I might need therapy. You walked in the door this morning and I said, what's wrong with you? And you hadn't said a word. I, I am. I'm an emotional wreck. It is just... It's been the worst week ever. You know how VH1 has the best week ever? Right. Yeah. I'm going to have Jamie White's worst week ever. And we're only halfway through. Yeah, I know. I know. That's not good. And then I started crying in my truck on the way here, and I thought, okay, you need help. Yeah, like, if you're crying good. on your way to work. But this is, uh, what's happened what's buzzing? is, I, I hear know. a big I, hum, too. I, I hear Hold it, that too. Night. Huh. Yeah, Maybe it's my brain. Yeah. <laughs> it's very oh, busy. Oh, it's the phone. Oh, oh well, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So, hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh-huh. You're having, like, the dam breaking. You know, slowly but surely, a few things leak through, and the dam holds up, and then finally it's just going to just... boosh, unload, and that's what's happening. Because, like, even right now, while talking to you guys, I could just totally cry. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> no, not Don't. Good. I'm not going to because it's so stupid because I had to talk with myself after I started crying. Okay, hi. Um, hi. <laughs> what day is it? Wednesday. Yeah. It's but, the third. Wednesday. Uh, the third, right. Okay. Uh, no, but we usually say it's August 3rd and stuff. Right. You know? Wednesday yeah. the third. Have we been together now a week and a half? Yes. Yes. Have you enjoyed your time with me? <laughs> yes. You've <laughs> <We've> had fun. <laughs> You're, you're, melt, you're melting down a week and a half in. I know. So just watch my demise every day, okay? <laughs> okay. Um, so, you know, and I'm so glad I wasn't late. I thought for sure I was going to be so late. I thought for sure. Okay. So thank God I made it on time. Yay. Um, I'm laying in my bed, and I hear some some weird stuff. Isn't it weird how your mattress can amplify stuff? If you're like, if your ear is on your mattress, have you ever done that? It yeah, like kind of travels yeah. through the springs or something. Yeah, and it does. It makes it louder and, and it weird. amplifies it. So I'm like, holy hell, somebody's in my house. And um, scary like, thought for a girl that lives alone. Exactly. Yes. So of course the crazy girl grabs her gun. <laughs> Now that's nice in jammies with feet in them. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) Rightfully so. Right. So I have the gun now. Now this is nuts. And I always think to myself, you're no Annie Oakley. You know, you've shot the damn thing one time when you bought it and that's it. (laughs) So I have this now loaded pistol in my hand (laughs) this morning. I hear noises. And then I'm like, okay, you've got to calm down. And I'm shaking because I hear something. Mm-hmm. And um, and so I'm like, you've got to calm down. You're just freaking out because I haven't spent the night alone. Um, I've spent the last two nights alone, but that's the first time in uh, several, several, yeah, in several while. months. Right. Yeah. So I'm just being paranoid, right? So I go, okay, you're being paranoid. I walk around my house. I walk all over my house. There's nobody there. So I'm like, put the gun away. <laughs> so I put the gun away. So, I'm going to take my truck this morning, so I need to get some crap out of my car, and my car's in the garage. Now, I'm going to try to keep all this going. At night, I leave my garage door just barely open because my cat is kind of an indoor-outdoor cat. Right. And, um, you know, he doesn't come in at night sometimes, so I leave the garage door a little bit open. And he's fine. He's been doing this for years. And I keep the uh, food in the garage for the cat, and I keep the kitty litter in the garage because I love having the kitty litter in the garage. I highly recommend it. God. That'd be great. Oh, I love it. And I have a baby doggy door that goes into my house from the garage. Yeah. Right. Where I've I can't even I yeah. can't even squeeze through it. It right. is a tiny little doggy tiny door. Tiny little yeah. doggy door right. that I taught Clifford how to go in and out of the house. So I go out to my car to get crap out of my car, including the security card. And I see my cat run by. And then he runs again and I, and it's kind of dark in there. I'm like, what is the the cat's freaking out? Right. And I turn on the light. And there's two freaking raccoons in my garage. Oh, that's scary. Oh, my God. A, we were just talking about this yesterday, so I kind of chuckled. (laughs) Right, at first. (laughs) Because we talked about this yesterday, and you guys, I've been leaving my garage door cracked for my cat for two years. And I've had cat food in there for two years. The only thing that's ever been in in actually my garage is a possum. Right. Ever. And I had a shovel after him. Yeah. So I, I'm we like, did just talk we about totally this yesterday. just talked about this yesterday. <laughs> so, so I see that there are two freaking raccoons in the garage. They've eaten all my cat's food and I keep a big bowl of food for my cat. Right. So I'm like, oh my God. And so they're, they're hiding behind it. Like this piece of furniture I have in there. My cat, I open the garage door all the way. He's sitting outside across the street. Like I ain't going in there. Right, I don't blame raccoons him. are 
big. Like they're like a medium sized dog. And me. Yeah. yeah. And they have hands like a little monkey and whoop your ass. So the one hisses at me, and I, again, refer to yesterday's show and kind of chuckle. Right. Because I remember Stench going, they hiss at you. Yep. And he did a whole animated thing about this time yesterday. So I'm like, oh, my God, are you kidding? Everything was fine. Like, you know, I just watched Sex in the City last night. They did this whole thing about how women don't need men because they got out of the cave and they're okay. Once they got out of the cave, they're like, hey, I can do this. Yeah. So it was a really self-empowering Sex in the City last night. Right. I'm like, you know what? I don't care if the snowboarder's out of my life because I don't need him to be happy and I'm, I'm fulfilled in my life. I have great friends. I, I have great family. I have... My own income, I, I'm okay. Right. You know, I don't need the snowboarder, yeah. so I'm fine. Now, all this is last night. <laughs> right, and then you wake up. And there's two raccoons. Right. <sighs> <sighs> Shut up is not it's funny. It's so funny, and I swear, I swear on the Bible, today I walked out the front door of my house, and there was a raccoon in my driveway. Really? And I look at it, and it stands up on its hind legs and looks at me and runs away, and I was oh, like, well, yours ran away. well, it was outside, too, and it was dark, and I'm... Big coming downstairs. Weren't you scared? And as I walk out, I, you know what? I was like, oh, I'm so glad that thing ran away. Oh. Because <laughs> the last one didn't. It just stood there. Stares at you. Yeah, and they don't back down. So the they're, the little bastards are buying this piece of furniture, and I can see their eyeballs, which I cannot right. stand. Do you still have the lights off at this point? No, the garage door's all the way open. Oh, so the garage light came Garage right. door's all the way open. My cat is across the street going, <laughs> you got to get rid of these suckers. Right. Hey, dummy, get out of there. Those things are mean. Right. <laughs> So I, I chase them, like I have a candlestick, this big old Pier 1 iron candlestick right. in one hand. Yeah. That's in my garage because I don't use it. Kind of like a trident. Yeah, like this. Yeah, yeah. it's this high. And not that you guys can see that. It's about four right. feet high. And I have an umbrella that I stole from the Four Seasons in my left hand. Right, okay. Good. That's not good. Although, open up the umbrella so you can use it as a shield and then prod them with the candlestick. Oh, see, see. where were you? Yeah, I was here. Dude, those things can climb. See, they, they climb over that umbrella and just bitch slap you. They're mean. So I'm, I, I'm like, ah, you know, and then I start hissing. Oh, that back? got him, by the way. Oh, really? You hissed back? I hissed back. Yeah. I'm like, ah, 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 and I'm like hyperventilating. I almost fall over. <laughs> so I'm like, ah, God, I need to work out because I can't hiss anymore. <laughs> and everybody in your neighborhood can hear everything oh, you we're do. Oh, so, so, we're, we're stacked right. as so houses. they just think you're crazy. You're yeah. now hissing in the There's garage. There's a, a chick in the garage. Hissing. I, right. <laughs> and think about this. I have a humongous white teddy bear stuffed upside down in, in a big old uh, trash can <laughs> in my garage. Because I've cleaned out my house from the snowboarder. Right, butthead. <laughs> right. So if God. they drive by or walk by, there's an upside down humongous three foot tall bear stuck upside down in the trash. They're like, hey, the neighbor's fighting with her boyfriend again at four o'clock in the morning. Exactly. <laughs> I hiss at him. Now, I have been self-empowered by Sex in the City that I have gotten out of the cave and I don't need anybody <laughs> but my friend's family and my job and I'm fulfilled through life and blah, blah, blah. Right. God. So, and, and I, let me just try to finish this whole story in this moment. So, um, so then... The bastard, the one bastard runs under my car. The other one's over on the other side of the garage. And I have a two-car garage. Two and a half. It was supposed to be three. The other car won't fit. Whatever. Right. It was that'll, a whole ripoff. That'll happen. <laughs> but that's a different Oprah. <laughs> they put three garage door things on it. Well, two and a one. Right. Yeah. Eh, it's a lie, that one. Yeah. I don't even <laughs> know if you can squeeze a Mini Cooper through that thing. You can't. No. Oh. No. I, I've seen that door. It's pretty useless. Yeah. Uh, when, one car garage never holds a one car. Uh -uh. Never, never, never. And when I bought it from downtown Julie Brown, mm -hmm. she had a beetle bug in it. Oh, yeah. And only one in it. So it looked huge. Right. Oh. So now I have these two raccoons in there. I'm flipping out. Well, then I throw the wrought iron thing at one of them. He runs around. Well, now I see a hammer and a knife. Oh, I have a you, lot of stuff in my now garage. Now we're talking. Hammer but and you knife. don't want to get that close to him. Yeah. No, I don't want to stab anything. But right. I'm thinking if they start attacking me, I'm going to have to stab it. It's right. a paring knife. You need like uh -oh. a air rifle or BB gun or pellet gun or something like that. Well, I think about going to get the pistol, but then uh -oh, no. the neighbors are going to hear. Yeah. Too. And through the walls, no. And then I'm trying to think, do they ricochet off concrete? Yes. Yeah, and then I'm going to be shot. And then, yeah, and then neighbors with guns will come in. They'll have a whole war. Right. Yeah. If Santa Monica will be under siege because of <laughs> exactly. two raccoons. <laughs> exactly. So now I, I'm, like, hitting the hammer on everything in my grudge, and I'm hissing. I'm like, <laughs> ah! 
Nothing. <laughs> they are not getting out of my garage. They they are really brave little monsters. They, they will not leave. Yeah. They, they won't move. They won't do anything. They've moved a couple times. So I'm like, oh, my God. So then I see a ceramic pot. I have a lot of stuff in my garage. Right. An empty ceramic pot. So I throw it all the way across the garage. It shatters everywhere. They rustle a little bit, and they're just staring at me. And then one comes out behind... Okay, I have a couch in my garage. Right. Uh, the one comes behind the, the couch, and he just is visible to me, and he's not afraid. He's uh-huh. totally not afraid. So I take the hammer, and <laughs> So now I'm like, what am I going to do? I'm going to be late for work. I have this uh, huge reputation for being late for work, <laughs> and I, I cannot be late for work anymore because there's 8,000 memos, right. and they can fire me without cause, and it's a whole thing. <laughs> I never even have to pay off my contract because there's happen. so many memos in my... yeah. <laughs> So I don't want to be late. And so then I remember the security card is in the car. There's a raccoon under the car. I have to go over there. And I start shaking like a nut job. No, and it's I, a little scary. I don't I give you that. So I'm like, I can't shake because I can feel fear. <laughs> yeah, they say that. I don't know. Right. They sense fear. So don't be afraid. But I can't keep my hands right. steady. <laughs> At that point, you're pretty pissed off, too, I'd imagine. And I'm mad because I've been self-empowered by sex in the freaking city. And it's just all a lie. Yeah. It's a facade. Right, because usually my ex-boyfriend leaves at the same time with me, and we would have had to deal with this together right. as man and woman. He'd have done the same thing you did. We'd be like, ah, get out of here. And when it didn't work, he'd have been like, oh, crap, let's go out the other door. <laughs> <laughs> so my garage door is wide open, and then I think to myself, I've got to lock the kitty door, because I've seen that America's Funniest Home video. Oh, yeah, that it'll come right in. Those yeah. raccoons will come inside, and once they're trapped inside or cornered, I'm toast. Happened to my friend in Santa right. Monica. It cat came in the kitty door in the middle of the night. You mean a raccoon? Uh, yeah, raccoon. T- t- cat comes in and out through the doggy door. Right. In the middle of the night, she hears, like, the cat making a lot of noise in the kitchen. It goes in there, and there's a raccoon in the kitchen eating the cat food, and it wouldn't leave. Wouldn't leave. No. She had to finish the food, and then it left. God, so I, I'm like, okay, I gotta, I gotta turn that little lock on the kitty door. Well, I haven't turned that lock in. I, I've never turned the lock, right. so I have duct tape on it because the cat comes through and accidentally knocks it sometimes. Yeah. So I tear off all this duct tape. I put the little lock on the kitty door, and my cat's still staring outside, going, "Hey, I, you know, I, I have no food. I have no water." <laughs> It'll be all right. So I close the garage door halfway because I want them to be afraid of the light. You know, be afraid of the light. I have all the lights on in the garage now. They still are in there, and the kitty door is locked. And I'm now I'm realizing that my cat is going to run into the kitty door and slam his head. Oh, he doesn't okay. know what a lock looks like. All right, he'll be okay. He'll do it once or twice. He'll do it like three times, Jack. <laughs> Katunk. Be pretty funny. Wish you had a yeah. camera. You should have set up the camera. So if like a raccoon chases him, he's gonna like think he's gonna have safety in my house. He's a punk. Is he declawed? No. Good. He's he, fine then. But he's gonna slam his head into ah, the kitty door. He's got his claws. He'll be running around. He's good. So I have two raccoons in my garage. So then I'm like, I have to go. I can't be late. There's memos. I get in my truck and I just well first I met the neighbor lady. I go. Oh wow. Yeah, and People she's are nice. Up? Uh, she has two sheep dogs. She always walks them. Oh, she okay. meets the other guy with the scooter. Okay, the guy you knocked over. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Do I ever have an easy day? <laughs> no. Not coming to work. <laughs> anyway, okay, so I'll tell you the rest about the lady. Um, I've met her dogs. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Should I'd have say... turned them loose in your garage. <sighs> and I just started boohooing. No, she wouldn't. I asked her. She said they're mean. <laughs> Meaning the raccoons, <laughs> not her dogs. Right. Wow. <laughs> Email Jamie Jacket. <laughs> You're funny. Okay, so let me just finish this, and I'm sorry, because I... Well, it's weird, because, uh, let's see, I've been crying, sweating, and shaking. Yeah, it's been a full morning. I've burned off a lot of calories. <laughs> emotional meltdown morning so far. It really has been, and but I'm feeling better. I'm glad you guys are here, because I'm feeling a lot better. I could break down more before 6 a.m. than most people do all week. No kidding! <laughs> And watching Sex in the City self empower my ass. That's anyway, crap. Um, so I I leave now the house and the garage door is pretty wide open and I lock the garage door from the inside and I lock the kitty door and I set my alarm because I'm like okay I'm not gonna like freak out about coming home right because somebody's gonna be in my house now but I so I set the alarm and all that crap and um and my cat's still sitting outside so now my poor cat has no food he has no water and he's gonna smash his head into the kitty door. <laughs> I would pay to see that video of your cat <laughs> yeah, ramming too. into the door. 
<laughs> you know what? It's worth doing that one day, just setting up a camera to no, film it. No, it's so mean. God, that's funny. It's mean. I feel so bad for him, and now I feel like I'm going to warp him where he'll never try to go through there again. Right, it'll ruin the whole kitty door thing. Exactly. So I go outside. My neighbor um, has the two big sheep dogs, and she meets up with the guy on the scooter that has one sheep dog. Anyway, she's out there, and I said... Um, you know, I just wanted to warn you, my cat is across the street, so the dogs, she doesn't have them on the leash. I said, this, so I don't want your dogs to go after my cat because there's raccoons in my garage, and that's why my garage door is open. And she goes, what? <laughs> and now, I have a really quiet neighborhood where everybody, we live close enough to the ocean, everybody has their windows open. Right, yeah. We're all, we are stacked in, in houses that are like. Pressed well, against each other. They're like townhouses. Right. Together, together, together. So she's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> So now everybody in the neighborhood is here. Exactly. And they're all pissed at you. Right. Now the guard pulls up, and he wants to know what's going on. I know. I hate that guy. I know. He's useless. He is. How do you know him? Because (laughs) the few times I've been to parties at your house, one night we're leaving your house, and he tailed my wife and baby and I like we were going to go loot somebody's house. Now I had a stroller and a pink diaper bag, and we were just going to our car, and he tailed us. But when you get a tan, Jack, you look like a terrorist. (laughs) Right. With my pink diaper bag bomb. Yeah. Totally (laughs) Totally. incognito. Yeah, a pink diaper bag bomb. (laughs) Right. That's so suspicious, it's like not even funny. <laughs> Leave that baby in the diaper bag and run. Right. Yep. So so I tell her, and she's like, oh, I'm going to put him on the leash. Those things are mean. I go, well, her Gillen is one dog, I guess. And she's like, you know, um, Gillen got in a fight with one and kicked the crap. And these are big sheep dogs. I go, right. oh, so you, because I was thinking that maybe you could let the sheep dog in my garage and like kind of run him out. And she's like, I'm not going to do that. Gillen got hurt by one. Okay, a little Gillen, you fag. Right. Oh, yeah. No wonder he's a sheep dog. Exactly. So now I'm mad at her and Gillen. (laughs) Right. My little dog kicked one's butt. See, it's weird what dogs will and what dogs won't. So uh, some dogs are stupid, crazy, like to fight, and some dogs just whoa, hell no, <laughs> I'm not messing with that thing. So I, I, yeah, so I'm looking at my cat and I'm like, I'm sorry, I almost pick him up and bring him to work. That would have been fun. That would have been fun. <laughs> Ernie would have hated us. <laughs> I know, because then I think, well, I don't have kitty litter here. I don't have food. And then I'm the nut job that is like, my cat won't have any food and water because there's raccoons in my garage. Remember when we lost him at the old building? Yes, and he was behind all the wires. Yeah, this is a yeah. much bigger building. I know. So you I didn't, well, I didn't bring him. Good. So <laughs> it would have been fun. And then I thought it would be really bad to tell our boss I can't um, go to the meeting because I've taken my cat home because he has poop. You bring him to the meeting, cat lady for life. Yeah, exactly. So then I get in my truck and it looks a little later than I usually leave. So now I think I'm going to be late and I don't want to be late. And so I just start crying and I'm not going to bleed anytime soon. I just got over that. I just start booing like a nut and I'm shaking and I'm like. You know, if I would have just let the snowboarder talk to that girl at the bar. (laughs) I really was saying this to myself. Right. I don't think this is not your fault. You were just overwhelmed. I I don't think you need to go back on your... No, I think you were starting to make some sense to yourself. (laughs) Morals and convictions because of two raccoons. I know. So I'm crying going, if I would have just let him talk to that girl, you know, he would have taken care of the raccoons. I can't believe this. And maybe I do need somebody in my life. And, you know, my God, this has been the worst week. Why, God, are you punishing me? Is this just like karma for me like you know getting mad at him for talking to that girl the whole entire night and then still talking to her when we broke up and whisper in her ear take her deck for reminding me of that him in the chest and saying oh I was coming to see you right (laughs) Right. that's the whole thing (laughs) (laughs) that's all very explainable right yeah sure Jägermeister done (laughs) yeah and oh I don't love Jamie enough to uh, ignore this girl he's drunk (sighs) gotta pass yeah, I know, but when you're drunk, you tell your real emotions. Why wasn't he like, I love you so much? He would have been as soon as he was done talking to that girl. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, let's go home, get crazy. Call Jimmy. Jimmy Jack and Stitch. da 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 Identify. All right, so I'm trying to sort some things out. Maybe you guys can help me. First of all, I've left my garage door uh, halfway open for... A couple of years. I've done this for a couple of years, and I've had that thing of food in there forever. So, A, is it that all of a sudden I get two raccoons in my garage um, because I now don't have a boyfriend. Right. And this is like some weird, like, test from God to see if I'm really, like, man enough to to be (laughs) Be by myself. Yeah. (laughs) 
Because I I've slept by myself for the last two nights, and so is this like some weird? And I haven't in months. Some weird test from God, like you know, are you really as strong as you think you are? Right. Because it's been a year where that food has been, and now to get raccoons, or is it B? We talked about all this yesterday, and now it's coming to fruition because there's some creepy stuff happening. Yesterday off the air, I'd said to Jack and Stench, "Gosh, you know what? We're really due for a plane crash." Right, I know that was weird. So, and then there was a plane crash, and then you Jack did that. No, I didn't. No, you you oh. made that happen at that point. And then Jack said, "Whatever happened to that real estate lady or whatever?" Yeah, that older woman from Orange County. Who I was talking about yesterday because I just hadn't heard anything about her. She had just disappeared. Right, and I'm like, oh, I don't know. They really haven't talked about it. And then last night they found her body. Yeah, that's yeah. Weird. And then we uh, were all having the conversation on the air yesterday about possums in your garage and crazy I mean, it's animals. It's a weird that you're thing. Of. It is a pretty trippy, weird day. So is it a weird, trippy like? Winky dink thing that we talked about it on the show, or is it, hey, uh, you know, you're gonna be tested because you don't have a boyfriend thing? I don't know. It's winky dinky. It's like the day that you decide, oh, I forgot to turn the alarm on in my car and it's stolen that night. It's exactly. Just That's crap weird. Like that happens. What is that called? It's called bull crap in life. <laughs> <laughs> so then, um, as I'm driving here, I'm just, I just fall apart. I just start crying, you know, like, and I think, gosh, if I just would have been. You know, more accepting of him talking to that girl. You know, I would have had him with me and I would have been better and blah, blah, blah. You know, and I was just crying like a nut job on the way to work. I mean, it was just crazy. So then I'm like, okay, calm down. A, you're not going to compromise. Right. You would have been unhappy with yourself anyway for compromising your Shut integrity. Shut Jack. Don't feel the fire, dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> there is no fire. Shut up. So I'm like, okay, let me just eliminate that right now. I'm not going to compromise my own personal self-respect and integrity. For a raccoon fighter. Exactly. Right. <laughs> for a guy that, that's going to treat me like crap, but he gets the, the raccoons out of my garage. Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm just not. I mean, it was this whole... Oh, good call. Yeah, it's this whole thing. Uh, yesterday, I don't know if y'all saw on Oprah and stuff about uh, child molesters. Some of these women stayed with them because they wanted uh, to be loved so much. That's always weird, weird. when you hear that. One, one woman was six months pregnant and slept in front of her bedroom door so her husband wouldn't molest her kids. Oh. Yeah. Talk about compromise. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so I'm not going to compromise, you know. Whispering in a girl's ear, though, a far cry from being a child molester. Well, yeah. I just wanted to add that. Well, yeah. yeah. But still, a compromise, and I'm not going to do that. So then I'm like, okay, am I crazy because I was crying? Like, do <laughs> I need help? So I started doing that, like, on the way here. Well, there's been a, uh, it's been a stressful week off air for you, too, and, and you've had a friend with some problems, so all that stuff. And I think when you, you just start dealing with everything, you don't have time to get upset. You're like, I'm dealing with this, and I'm doing this, and you're busy. And then when you get that moment to to a breakdown, you do. That's normal. Yeah, you think? Yeah, then yeah. I started questioning my own insanity. No. Like, am I crazy that I'm crying on my way to work because stupid... And I was like, put it in perspective, dumbass. Right. Like, A, you're not going to compromise yourself. B... You know, your girlfriend's having one hell of a time right now. Yeah. I mean, really, two raccoons in your garage, you're going to be okay. Right. And the girl whisperer pissed you off to start the week. The who? The girl whisperer. Oh, that uh, the, yeah. the snowboarder? Yeah. The snowboarder. Yeah. Anyway, all right, so how are you guys? <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> Strange coinkinicky that I encountered a raccoon, too, this morning. Only that is it, weird. It fled. And it's weird that the plane crashed and I said we're due for one. Right. Yeah. You well, you know who can explain all this? Uh, Gary Spivey's coming in on Friday's show. I don't like that. <laughs> that That's crazy. crazy. I mean, I like him. Up. He's weird. But I don't believe in that stuff. But he always does some, he always never fails to creep us out at least once or twice while he's here. I know what it's called. Irony. Isn't it ironic when yeah. you take the club off your uh, car for the first time and then it's stolen? Right. That's what that was. It was just ironic that ironic. I've had my garage door halfway open for years, and now that I don't have a boyfriend, I have two killer raccoons. I'm going to make them kill her. <laughs> killer yeah. raccoons are here. They were not afraid of me. Oh, God. Anyway. Uh, also, I, I feel bad because I might be, not only am I falling apart and um, I'm having a mental breakdown, but I feel stupid, too, because I don't get the Hooters billboard. Oh, uh, I haven't seen it. It's suggestive. Uh, it's but it's I don't a picture understand. of a rooster that says only roosters, roosters get, get better pieces of chicken or something. But what does that mean? I, I think it's a, a sexual. Yeah, but what? But what does it mean? 
Means they've got damn good chicken at the Hooters. Right. No, and but what's the sexual okay, window? That rooster getting a good piece of chicken means it's piece having sex with the chicken. It's a good and piece so of they're tail. saying only rooster gets a better piece. Only sex is better than our damn hot wings. Right. Only only That's what that means? Yeah. I mean it's really stupid and for people to be upset, I just But I felt so stupid I didn't get it. Yeah, I mean it's not that it's not <laughs> you know, that like blatantly obvious or But I mean I don't really still get it. I mean, all it's insinuating is that roosters do chickens. <laughs> yeah. But don't they? I, yes. <laughs> yeah, which is probably maybe if you were a rooster, way better than actually eating one. Well, I still, I don't know why it's offensive. It, uh, yeah, because it insinuates rooster chicken sex. Yeah. Right. But who cares? And it's better than yeah, hot wings. <laughs> which I find hard to believe. I'd much rather eat a hot wing than bone a chicken. But you're not a rooster. Hmm. Well, sometimes he is. <laughs> <laughs> Call Jimmy. Picture of a cat on the news drinking water, which is what your cat can't do today. Because you locked him out of the house with two evil rabid raccoons. And my right arm hurts, so now I feel like I'm having a heart attack. Having a stroke. Or a stroke. No, that's from swinging the candlestick around. Yeah, maybe it was. <laughs> that, you know it what? Is. From the Iron uh, Pier 1 candlestick. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, and damn it, yesterday was the whole, if you're a Pier 1 member, you get like 20% off. Uh. On Tuesdays, the first day of the month. You could have gone and bought more raccoon fighters. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So uh, we have so much to talk about this morning and also uh, to give away as well. You guys um, are still doing the Jack and Stench Bowling for Soup tennis extravaganza? Yes. This is what's going on. It's the big tennis match that they're having out at the Home Depot Center. It starts on Monday. It goes for like a whole week. And like bowling. superstar tennis people, right? Yeah, like Serena's going to be there. Yeah. I got a shirt that says I love Serena, and I'm totally wearing it on Monday night. We should try to have her on the show. She hates us. Okay. <laughs> it's that whole thing with Jack. Oh, but, oh right. yeah, that, then, that incident. Yeah. yeah. So what happened is Bowling for Soup is going to perform there, so we're going for opening night, and we're going to let people meet Bowling for Soup at the tennis match. Don't ask me why. Bowling for Soup and tennis, but it's pretty cool, and, and people get to go do well, that. Well, the Bowling for Soup guys can't bowl. That's yeah. what I heard. And uh, coming right. up here in a little bit, we're going to have uh, John Melendez from The Tonight Show. And yep. he's got tickets for us that we're going to be able to send people to The Tonight Show to see Avril Lavigne. Holy hell. We're going to do that. And then we're going to give away more tickets today for people to come in studio with us next Tuesday when NXS comes in and plays in the Star Lounge. And some of the contestants from the Rockstar NXS, they're right. coming in here. And they're going to film it all for the TV show. So you get to be on TV and see NXS play. Awesome. All right. Really so cool. action packed. Very fun. Um, should we do our first calls of the day? Yeah, definitely. All righty then. Oh, oh. First call of the day. The first call of the day with Jamie, Jack, and Stitch. That's what those raccoons are doing right now. They did. That one looked at me and just laughed. What are the chances, Jack? It's been a year I've been... uh, That garage door's been open, and now I... They just found you. You've had the food. You've been lucky, and they just tracked you down. Or they're new. They just moved in. Or they know that I haven't been alone in several months, and now I'm alone, and they're like, uh... They can smell singleness. Yeah, they can smell when there's no guy there. No testosterone. So they're like, oh, there's a chicken here. She'll be afraid. Be very afraid. Scared girl. Let's get her. I, I really, I had this whole talk today. Like, compromise yourself. So you have a boyfriend that chases raccoons. That's stupid. But maybe I need help because I'm crying. I mean, like, it was just. And then I'm like, well, maybe I need help that I think I need help. Right. <laughs> no, there's a, it's a lot going on this week, and, and you're slowly cracking. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Along with my skin. Because remember yesterday I got voted off the squad, George Maloof's uh, Palms cheerling squad. Right. Because I'm too old. At least he moved you up to general manager, not like water girl. All right. Yeah, whatever. Okay, first calls of the day. Did you do who was sponsored by? Oh, first calls of the day is brought to you by Comedy Central, where you can watch the roast of Pamela Anderson Sunday, August 14th at 10 p.m. And the first caller of the day will be on the guest list to actually go to the roast. That is so awesome. I can't even tell you. Are, Are you going? Started a fight at my house last night. Oh, good. I want to hear about that. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see here. Here's Debbie. You're the first call of the day. Yay. Woo! Debbie? Yes. Hello? Hi. Uh, you're also going to that whole Comedy Central uh, roast for Pamela Anderson. 
Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah. Rock on. You and a guest. Oh, well, thank you. I didn't even know. Well, I know because we just give surprises out for no apparent reason. We're cool uh, like you that. You guys are wonderful. And you know what? I didn't start listening until Danny left. Because I just, you guys are great without him. Oh, thank well, you. Thanks, thanks, Debbie. We, we, you know, I, I couldn't stand his voice. I you already got the tickets, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't do it, so he killed it for me. But oh, well. Jamie, you're not crazy. Well, thanks, Debbie. Oh. I love you even more and more. <laughs> <laughs> I went through the same thing about a month ago. I lost my niece, and I was like, and then I broke up with somebody at the same time, and I didn't cry for like two months. I couldn't cry. I was like, oh, I can't cry because there's too much shit going on. Excuse me. Oh, okay. Let's start all over because you, you know what, Jack? I need like a thing like, brah, brah. Here it is. Hold on. You cussed, and we had to push the button. Okay, let's start again. Hi, Debbie. Hello. <laughs> so Sorry. You, that's okay. So you had this whole pro- we like lost four seconds of your conversation because we yeah. Went. So, um, so I you, went through the same thing as you about maybe two months ago. So you lost your niece, and then um, and then you didn't cry, and you broke up with a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend, whoever. And oh, you, it was on the same day. It was holy. like I broke. Oh. I lost my niece, and I broke up with the guy on Friday and moved out. <laughs> wow, wow, you were very busy that day. Oh, yeah, I was real busy. <laughs> and so you thought you were okay, you held it all together, and then what happened that made you snap? Uh, it was a song on the radio, and I was like, eh, and I started crying, and people must have thought I was nuts driving, but oh, well. Oh, that's you funny. You know, it's something you have to do, but it's better for you, and you know what? Don't compromise yourself. It's not worth it. Yeah, it's not. It, it's just that for that split second, you know what I mean? You think, God, if I just would have let him talk to that stupid girl, I wouldn't be single. Yeah, but you know what? He yep. has no right. You know, I know what? He, he doesn't. He, he needs to respect. He was himself. drunk. I don't care. What's the song matter. that cracked Deb, uh, you know Debbie? What? It doesn't matter. You, I could be drunk off my. You know, I could be drunk, and I still know what I'm doing. You're allowed to say ass. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know what I can. Say. Hey, believe me, half the time I don't know either. Okay. He wasn't <laughs> hooking up with her. He just he he was drunk and and stupid and. That it happens. Hey, it doesn't matter. Okay, if your wife is there, okay, would you sit there no matter what you're drunk or whatnot? Wrong person to ask about this. The answer is no, right? <laughs> right now, no. That's a no. No, not not any any man that respects his girlfriend or wife would never. Not true, because I've done. We talked about the thing that's happened to me earlier the on. The Twizzler when thing. When we were boyfriend girlfriend, it was bad, and I, honest to God, was so drunk I didn't know I did it, and I apologized my ass off for. Years. Yeah, but you you know what? That's different. You also apologized. He blamed me for his actions. <laughs> he blamed you? <laughs> yeah, it was my fault he did what he did. Oh, yeah. Because I went over the edge, and I was too extreme about it, and, you know, Whatever. I shouldn't break up with him because of the blah, blah. Well, you know what? You should, and there's probably a better fish in the sea for you. Yes, there is. Yeah. I've heard, I you know, I, I listened to some of the things that you said, and I was like, damn, this guy's an idiot. Like, I don't understand how hard it is just to respect somebody and just to say, you know what, uh, let me compromise myself. Because when you go into a relationship, it's two people, it's not one. Well, because he's never dated anybody he had to respect. Right. He's uh, never he's never been faithful to a woman in his life, and he's never had to respect them because they but don't... But he re- wasn't being not faithful, see, he was being stupid. That's require. another telltale sign of somebody that's going to tell you, oh, well, I've never been faithful. It's like somebody that lies to people and says, I'm honest with you, is not honest with you. Yeah, and when they you say know? that they're a nice guy, because remember I told you, right. he told me, I go, nice guys don't tell that they're nice guys. Right, and then later he told you he was a player. Yeah, so, so which who is he? He has no idea who he is. I hate yeah, him. Yeah, he has oh, no idea. Crime, Isn't he young? Yes, he He's yeah. young and stupid. Hold on, this is all. Here's the deal: if you were to cheat or to do something really, really bad, I totally am with you. Don't get over that; it's over. This is something that we can all get over and move past. There's no reason to kill the relationship because he, in essence, it really boils down to he talked to a girl in front of you. But that's really what it does boil down to. And you're but you're making it sound as simple it. as him. I well, mean, I'm, I'm he to talked to a, he talked to a girl once, and then he whispered in her ear in front of me. And then after I broke off the relationship Stormed and came off. back, and yeah, right. he was so upset that oh yeah, I don't know, he's hanging out talking to us more. And he was still. Drunk. He even told her we broke up because of you. <laughs> Uh, he told yeah, her. He told her. But you've broken up before. He knew. But why would he give her that later. power to? I don't even want to talk about that. I want to talk about raccoons. Yeah. So anyway, Debbie, what song was it? <laughs> oh, I don't agree with him at all. I think he's he's silly. Uh, yeah. It's well, it's, he's never dated a woman. He's just dated kids that work at Denny's. <laughs> anyway, um, Debbie. Yes. <laughs> what song was it? Uh, which what song that, was it? Yeah, that. Truly, sec- madly, deeply by Savage Garden. What was that? Truly, madly, madly deeply. deeply. 
Sadly Deeply by Savage Garden. And what was it about that song just set you over the edge? Uh, well, that was our song. <laughs> oh, yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. yeah. Thank God we don't have a song. I think it was like Hot Dog in a Hallway or something. Peaches <laughs> in a can or whatever it was. Or Peaches, was. Um, uh, But bottom song. line, if you're not crazy, it's okay to break down, and he's not worth your time. Well, thank you, Debbie. And um, Jack is being very evil because he's playing this song now. You oh, you're Jack. you're just being an ass. Don't do that. Jack, you're the nice guy. <sighs> yeah, please go, don't make nice guy, go. Like, I, I just need to, to reference it for the people out there position. so they know. I can't cry. Oh, hold on. Let, let's hear the words. Let's see if I... Nice song. Give me a reason for living. So I kicked you to the curb. That's a really great song. I so I live with, with you for a while. <laughs> <laughs> now you annoy the hell out of me. You're running it. <laughs> Have that effect. <laughs> oh. It was it was a good song, Debbie. Yeah, it's a good song. I was moved. But Stench ruined it, and then Jack played it, and I'm not sure what's going on in this room. They're just being mean and, and ass-like. Yeah, it's okay, though. That's because they're oh, men. Don't worry. Hot Dog in the Hallway is coming up next. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, Debbie? Yes? But don't forget, you're going to go see Pamela Anderson in that roast. Yeah! Oh, that's fabulous. Yay! 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 First call of the day! Oops, sorry, Debbie. Yay, yeah. Debbie! Go, go Debbie! Crying right now. Why are you guys being support? We're being supportive. <laughs> Sorry, Debbie. We're helping her get past it. <laughs> Call oh. Jimmy Stench. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. Wow. All right. Uh, we promised you this. I don't even know if I have this. Hold on. I have a fine, too. I should have done this one. Oh, it's going to be the wrong one. No, it won't. Well, it's the old one. Oh, it's not even. I can't find See? it. Uh, it sucks to be you. You know what? What is wrong with you? I've had a crappy-ass day, and you're not helping. Sorry. It's the loafers. He's all fired up because he's wearing loafers. <laughs> yeah. Today. I'm sexy today. Yeah, sexy and evil. <laughs> yeah. My middle name. Uh, all right, anyway. Um, yeah, this is the old theme, but that's all I have. Um, from uh, The Tonight Show, by the way. And he, sh he was just added, what, this year, last year, two years ago, Recently. three years ago? Yeah, I have questions about that, too. He's just added, and, like, what, six months later, Jay's like, yeah, I'm retiring in 2009 or whatever Yeah, it is. exactly. <laughs> hey! And ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, John Melendez! Hey, John! Hi, Happy, how are you? Good, how are you doing? It's early as crap. Yes, I know, doesn't it suck? Yeah, yeah, it I, does. I, you know, I left getting up this early. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know you did. And now what, you live in Los Angeles, yeah? Yeah, I live in Los Angeles. And, where, where do you live? Uh, Calabasas. Oh, you crazy bastard. You don't seem like a family, like, <laughs> lockdown guy that lives in Calabasas. White, white picket fence, you got a rock and roll band and stuff. Yeah, yeah, well, I, you know, I, I'm having my midlife crisis. I went and got myself a Harley, and, you know, <laughs> now, you know, you know, I'm doing the L.A. thing with the convertible, you know. Oh, now, do you have a yeah. wife? I got a wife and uh, two kids, and she has uh, one on the way. Oh, because wow. here, wow, congratulations, Thanks. Mr. Fertile. Um, <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> wow, those suckers swim right to it, don't they? Oh, yeah. Um, now, here's the, the question, John. Does Because uh, this is what Calabasas is known for, women that dress like their kids. <laughs> you know, it's so funny you say that because one of my wife's, like, culture shock when she got here and she dropped the kids off to school and the moms are with the boob implants, the lip implants, right. you know, yeah. they're all like all the, the, the uh, she she clothes, you know, and my, and my wife's in, you know, a robe. You know? Right. <laughs> oh, not in Calabasas. She'll be kicked out. She'll yeah, be run exactly. out of town. Exactly. You'll have a burning robe in your uh, <laughs> <That's> driveway. <laughs> driveway. <laughs> <laughs> they don't allow that. And then the moms and the, the little, like when they're like four and five years old, it's some company and they make mommy and me clothes and they dress alike and it's just and it's only in Calabasas. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's true, it's true. I mean, it, you know, cuz cuz they both have those like juicy jeans or whatever. Right, on. exactly. Yeah, no, I know. But I mean, I I, I think it is a, a, a little odd that the 8-year-olds now are getting breast implants. That's a little weird. <laughs> you think that's too young because I I don't. I I think they look a lot better at 8 with the uh, boobs. 
So Spider is a guy, so Stench. Yeah. That's my nickname around the house. Oh. Oh, it is? Oh, God. <laughs> uh, do you, are you one of those guys that think it, it's really funny that you fart? Oh, uh, yes, I am. Me I too. Am. <laughs> yeah, I still haven't grown up. Yeah, Yeah, because can I tell you something? Being a female, it, it's not funny. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, my four-year-old daughter loves to say, Daddy farted. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's just, I don't know why men even, you know, it doesn't matter how old you you guys are. You find it fascinating. Yeah. Uh, I just think it's because we like the smell. Yeah. Is that what it is? <laughs> it's not the sound? It was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's both. I think it's because it's so juvenile that we, that, that we it, you know, it brings us back to a better time in our lives. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, my two-year-old can laugh right now. When yeah, exactly. She'll exactly. go and <laughs> laugh. <laughs> Everything's fun in those days, right? Yeah, I, I like it when you guys actually surprise yourselves with the sound that comes out of your ass. Oh, yeah, you know, speaking of which, uh, you know, but yeah, believe it or not, I'm on a way to get my colon exam today. So, oh, you uh, are? Oh, wow. Yeah, oh. I know, I know. Because, well, you know what? They, well, I don't want to get too... Uh, How old are you, John? I'm only 39, but, uh, you know, I you know, I had that... Uh, Do you have some blood in this stool? No, my... no, no, no. It's just, let's just say, uh, I, I, you know, let's, let's just say things are a little narrow. Yeah, my, oh, my yeah. Uh, doctor said last time I had a physical, he puts the rubber glove on, and then he goes, how old are you? And I was like, 36. And he goes, oh, this doesn't start to 40. He took oh, the glove my off. God, like, that's Whoa! creepy. Yeah, yes. it's a real pain in the ass. Oh, <laughs> so what, your bowel movements are really thin? How do you know when you're in a proctologist's office? I don't understand what he means by they're really thin. I don't know. How, do you know how, 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 how? How do you know when you're in a proctologist's office? I said office? how. Everybody's sitting sideways. That is so dumb. <laughs> well, then you obviously haven't had any problems down there. No, but I don't understand what you mean by your bowel movements are thin. Oh, God. They're narrow. Well, or narrow. You know, I don't want to get graphic, but let's just say I had fistula surgery like five years ago, and uh, let's just say I have to get checked up every now and then. Oh, you know oh. what he's like? He's like the um, uh, Play-Doh barbershop. Yeah. Right. <laughs> he had the star you know attachment put in. Actually, actually a very good analogy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had the star attachment. You can get all right. kinds of attachments. <laughs> Play no fun exactly, factory. Exactly. <laughs> I have a question. I would go with the rectangle attachment. Oh, really? Okay, oh. good to know. I'm going to think of you quite differently tonight when I watch you on The Tonight Show. Yes. Uh, actually, and also tripping the whip at 10 o'clock tonight on the Sci-Fi Channel. The who? What? The Sci-Fi Channel. I know that part, but what's it called? Trip in the Rift? Tripping, yeah. tripping the Rift. And what is that? It's like it's an animated series. It's like you know Pixar animation. Here's time for my plug. Okay, go yeah. ahead. Uh, so hang in there, stench. Uh, <laughs> um, it's it's Trip in the Rift. It's like it's like uh, it's like you know Pixar animation. It's, it parodies Star Trek and Star Wars, the, the, uh, and it just goofs on all different shows and celebrities. And it's written by two guys from Saturday Night Live. And it's starring me, Carmen Electra, Stephen Root. It's a funny uh, comedy. You guys should watch. That it. sounds funny. So you're doing a voice in it. I'm eight characters, but my main one is Spaceship Bob. I'm the, I play the spaceship. <laughs> wow, that's big, John. <laughs> oh, it's uh, I'm that one is of the cool. Six leads. Wow, he's the spaceship. You know what? As a juvenile guy, I think. Better than ever being in a movie to be animated, yeah, way be cooler. Well, well, you know that's why it's actually a great uh, 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 segue here because all the uh, a lot of the humor is this juvenile kind of humor, so you guys would enjoy it. <laughs> hey, what are you saying? We're, our intellect is uh, supreme. I think you pegged us. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, it, like in other words, play though might be mentioned. In <laughs> <laughs> and we'll laugh. So, how are things going on the Tonight Show? By the way. I love it. It's like a great, you know, I've always wanted to be in television. I went to NYU for film and television, and this is great. I mean, Jay's one of the greatest guys to work for, a real sweetheart, and uh, I'm having a blast. And uh, it's really been a fun thing. And, you know, I, I mean, yeah, and it's, I heard you mention this is the funniest thing. I haven't even, Jay announces his retirement. I haven't unpacked my bags yet. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, you're kidding. Yeah, but you know what? Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised that in three years, uh, you know, Jay's got something else in the way. I mean, Jay's, uh, you, know, he, you know, he's a workaholic, and uh, 
and hopefully he'll always want his stuttering announcer with him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, you know, we have a little kid that has a lisp or whatever. He has a speech impediment. Yeah. But he's starting to grow out of it, and so now he's well, not... Too a- bad. Look what it did for me. I know. I know. And he's now he's not really as adorable, and we kind of, like, offed him. We're going to fire him. So... He doesn't, he doesn't have a lisp anymore. Is that why you didn't get your stuttering corrected? Because, you know, you really, then you have nothing else to offer? Well, no. No. But, uh... You know, actually, it's, uh, I, I, you know, with a lot of speech therapy, I'm just going to ignore your insult. But, uh, you know, I actually went, you know, through a lot of therapy. I mean, speech therapy. And, right. uh, you know, and, and also a lot of stutterers get better with age. I think that has something to do with it. Well, and how weird was it? I mean, I don't even know if you know this, but remember so, M- Mel... Mouth gets better, ass gets worse with age. <laughs> no right. kidding. Uh, but, you know, like Mel Tillis, he could totally sing, but then he couldn't talk. Yeah. Well, also, well, that's why I could, do, I could do the announce because, yeah, you know, singing and anytime you raise your volume or do a character, you're not going to stutter. So that's what helps. You know? Oh, really? So that's got to piss off your wife. So when you're yelling at her, you don't yeah. stutter. Perfect. Yeah, but it, uh, yeah, it also pisses off the kids, you know? <laughs> yeah, they're like, what do you want, a <laughs> Now, does your wife ever in the heated argument or whatever, if you get caught up on a word, does she just make fun of you? Because uh, I no, would. No, no, because, you know, she knows better because, you know, she doesn't want two black eyes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you really strike me as that guy. <laughs> nah, I know, you know, come on. Nobody's making fun of me except for my four-year-old. Oh, uh-huh. oh your four-year-old does like the d- 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 dad? No, she does the daddy farted thing every yeah. three minutes. Oh, but she yeah. doesn't make fun of your stuttering? Because nah, I got a teacher. No, no, you know, you know, if I'm comfortable, uh, you know, they're not going to go for me. Uh, I mean, I'm, if I'm comfortable, I'm not going to stutter that much. You know what I mean? It's, He's not stuttering at all anymore. Uh, you well, lost I mean, I'm going to be uncomfortable around a guy named Stench. <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah, it's like you guys are friends. You should go yeah. out and have beers and bitch yeah, about no, your wives. You're debating if his name should be Stench or Stretch. Yeah, yeah it, was it was a, a whole, whole thing. Fight. Now I'm back to Stench because it, it wasn't appealing to advertisers, but after five years, I guess they're used to it. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, what's the stretch? Are you a tall guy? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So you're a tall, smelly guy? <laughs> yeah. Yes, you pegged him. It's like you you know him. There I am. <laughs> so, so are you married? Yeah. Married oh. with two kids, too, and my wife doesn't find the fart game amusing at all. Uh, so now, are all you guys, like, married? Hey, John, thanks a lot. Oh, okay. no, Jamie just dumped her boyfriend uh, Monday, as a matter of fact. Saturday. Oh, congratulations, Saturday. Jamie. Thank you. I have a cat. He was talking to another girl. It wasn't that simple. Why do you make it sound like I'm an idiot? Because it was that simple. Anyway, John, how are you? What's up, John? Okay. How's hey, that John? sci-fi show? Yeah. John, I have a question. Sure. Okay, so pretend that you and your wife were out um, having cocktails, Okay. Yeah. And then um, you went to the bathroom and you came back and she was totally talking to some guy. Fine, whatever. And then you go up there and, and she says, oh, this guy, you know, was talking to me, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, oh, fine, cool. Well, like, you know, here's the problem, Jamie. I'm married. I wouldn't really care. Exactly. <laughs> and I didn't. All right. So then then you walk over and you guys are having a drink, uh, you know, at the bar. And then that guy comes back over and they make goo goo gaga eyes out of each other. And then your wife leans over and whispers something in his ear. Well, now, is the game on? (laughs) (laughs) That's such a married guy right there. (laughs) You then throw a fit. You take off your wedding ring. You go, you know what? Screw you. I'm not going to be disrespectful like that. You leave. Then you feel kind of bad, so you come back, and your wife's sitting at the table having cocktails with that guy. Thoughts? Well, who's buying the drink? <laughs> you know what? He's a married guy. He's really not going to get riled up about it. No, I, you know what? I'm, I'm, I trust my wife. So it, it, this, it, you know what? It, it, it would never happen. She wouldn't entertain a guy like, you know. She'd it, never disrespect you like that, right? No, no, exactly. no. Exactly. Okay, end of story. Oh, that, see? Boy, uh-huh. here we go. Uh, so anyway, but John, you know what? Like people like you and Stench and Jack, you guys, they're all married. You all just sound so miserable. No, I'm actually really happy, believe it or not. <laughs> Me too. No, I am. I, I got a great wife, I swear to God. No, no, I believe y'all have great wives, but y'all just bitch about being married. Ah, uh, just something new to complain about. Yeah. You complain <laughs> when you're single, too. It's limiting. Marriage. Uh, listen, marriage is a perfect... Everything is great about marriage. The only problem with marriage, is, you know, for a guy is that you can't sleep with any other... Anybody else? <laughs> Not in trouble. If they can figure that one thing out, I think it'd be a great thing. Well, why don't you guys have an open marriage? No. <laughs> because uh, you know, there's no way that would ever go down, in, you know, in my household. Yeah. Well, what if you guys play that game in bed where you guys say, "Hey, you know what? Someday you can, you know." 
Uh, well, you know what? You know, maybe you should come over and talk to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was just thinking about you in bed trying to talk dirty and then stuttering. Oh man! <laughs> well, listen, you know, it, 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 uh, the uh, let, let's just say that my tongue moves very rapidly, and, <laughs> and it has been very helpful in those occasions. Yeah, she's probably like, "Please stutter, stutter." <laughs> <laughs> but good luck. Uh, so you're a single woman now? I have a cat. Yeah, I, I have a cat. I'm a cat lady. I have a cat. I have a cat, and, and it has hats. And he's hot. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know what that means. You have a cat, so you don't need a guy. No, it doesn't. Uh, you I mean, know what? It, it doesn't mean anything. The cat's the only constant right now. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. What's the cat's name? Clifford. Oh, that's a cool name. At least yeah. it's normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like fluffy or anything. No, it's not like she, she or any. Yeah. yeah, like what was that lady with those stupid pet dogs? Remember? Oh, We're like oh, Chloe and Chanel. Yeah. yeah, because we did a thing like what's a hot girl killer? Um, and they were personalized license plates and people with dogs or cats that have like and small dogs. Chanel. Yeah. yeah. Right. And oh, God. Gucci. And Gucci. And yeah. anybody that has a little baby dog that they carry around like a baby. Or well, I got a friend who's got two dogs, and their names are Dolce and Gabbana. Oh, See, yeah. that, that's Punch stupid. Punch them in the face. Yeah, kill those dogs. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you the guy's name is Bruce Jenner. The that's his guy? Name. Oh, he's not very nice to his kids. Yeah, we had his kids on. They were evil. They don't like him, and they say his face is all jacked up. Oh, he was is on that, that show oh, with you. No, Bruce is one of the greatest guys. No, he's not. I love him. Well, I don't like him at all because I like his uh, sons that he's been very evil to, and his face well, is all jacked up. Oh, what happened to his phone? I don't know. He's on a... Uh, hey, what happened to your phone? Uh, is it working? Yeah. Yeah, I cut out there for a second. Oh, crazy. I said, I, you probably find his sons attractive. No, I mean, they're they're way too young for me. They're just really nice guys, and they were I think they I were did. totally duped over by their, their dad. Oh, well, how old are you? I'm 36. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not too bad. <laughs> oh, well, thanks, John. I appreciate you <laughs> thinking that my age is not too bad. That's four years <laughs> away from uh, colon checkups. You're yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that's one way to look at it. There you go. <laughs> oh, my God. I have something to look forward to. Well, I got to go. I got to do this other show. All right. Yeah, hey, uh, John. Yeah. And we're supposed to give away this Avril Lavigne. Oh, yeah, Avril Lavigne. She, she's good, ain't she? I like yeah. her. She's going to be on The Tonight Show next Friday, the 12th. Uh, right now, we'll take callers 10 and 11 at 1-800-STAR-97. And we'll give you passes to go to The Tonight Show and see Avril. Don't forget to check out John tonight on the Sci-Fi Channel. He's going to be on the cartoon, Tripping the Rift. And then, of course, at 11.35, NBC, The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. And this Leno. Friday on The Tonight Show, i got a correspondent feature you'll really enjoy. Oh, and you're going uh, out? And guys, if if any you're, if any time that you want to come to the show, you let me know. You come down. Oh, you're yeah, awesome! Thank you. Thanks, thanks, John. John. Thank uh, you thanks, so much. All, All right, right, see you later. Up. Bye, John. Not sure about him. <laughs> He's infantile. <laughs> I like him. <laughs> Call. Identify. All right. Um, we have all kinds of phone calls about a billion different things, including the uh, Hooters billboard that I'm sorry to say because I, I apparently I'm a moron. I don't get. It says only a rooster gets a better piece of chicken. I don't get it. I don't. I don't get it. Sexual I, innuendo. Only a rooster gets a better piece of chicken. Yeah, you go to you go to Hooters. You get the wings. They're really damn good. But if you were getting some tail, so to speak, if you're the rooster, that'd be better. I still yeah, I, it's, I don't it's see not it. that I mean it's just kind of stupid. It's not that offensive really. I mean I I don't but I don't even see I don't know. Maybe I don't. Know. Anyway, Samantha? Hi. 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 Good morning. How are you guys? We Good. are Good. lovely. How are you? I'm doing just fine. Um I heard this um on the news this morning like on the radio about this billboard and some lady made a comment where she's like, yeah, I don't mind. Just keep it away from schools. So that's implying a 10-year-old's going to understand it, and I don't even <laughs> right. understand it. How, how old are you? I'm 22. And I'm 36, and I don't get it. And I was like, what? And I just got finished with an all-night shift, so I'm thinking maybe I'm just, like, really tired. But I'm like, a 10-year-old's going to understand this thing? No way. Only a rooster gets a better piece of chicken. I would understand maybe if it's only a rooster gets a better breast yeah. or, or something like I don't even know. I don't get it. Yeah. I just feel like a moron, though, don't you? <laughs> no, I, I yes, and I'm thinking, I'm just going to go ask my boyfriend what it means. I'm like, no, then he'll think I'm a real naive chick or something. You know? Yeah, because it was funny. I, I actually did the same thing. I um, contemplated whether telling y'all that I don't get it. 
Because I didn't want everybody to think I was just completely yeah. a doofus. Yeah, I contemplated on asking too, and I'm like, no, I don't seem like a total idiot. But. Yeah, I know. Isn't it, but don't you uh, sometimes you laugh at people that you don't like Dennis Miller? I'm like, Haha, I don't know what the hell he's saying. <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, what? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I don't know what that meant. <laughs> I, know, I know. But yeah, you laugh at it anyways, right? Yeah, and I thought, wow, am I, I mean, there's such a big controversy. It's on every, you know, TV station, radio station, and I just don't get it. And that's what makes me feel so, just a, like a moron. At least, though, it, there's there's something there. Look, at remember all the stink about the Paris Hilton commercial where she was just washing a car? Well, I get that. that. Yeah, but I get that. She I mean, was she wearing was scantily a bikini. clad, yeah. yeah the wet. This is at least trying to be clever. But this is a, but I mean, I think what, what we're saying, Samantha and I are saying is we don't get the sentence. Yeah, it, it's it's not as clever as they're trying to be, I guess. Right. I don't know. I mean, like, yeah, they it, need to try something new there or something. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Does anybody even eat at Hooters anymore? I don't know. Do they still wear the pantyhose with shorts? Yes, yes. and it's pretty annoying. <laughs> yeah, suntan. Well, for them, the 80s is coming back in, so the song. Oh, oh that's right. right. The there you go, shorts. Samantha. Way to be on the positive side. Thanks for your phone call. All right, thanks. All right, bye. bye. Call Jeannie J. It's Jamie, Jack, and Stitch. Are you always this good-natured? I mean, in the morning before coffee, too? Identify. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, anyway, lots of stuff going on in the news, and I know y'all are holding uh, to talk to us, too, so just uh, a second. We were just watching this in the news, and it's just terrific. And, you know, I know yesterday we were, like, kind of light about the things you can't get over, things you can't forgive, things that whatever. But, man, something I just uh, I can't even get over... Let alone, I'm not in this situation, but I can't get over that it happened, and that's in Glendale uh, last night. Oh. Um, a woman, I'm not sure what she was doing. Do you know what she was doing? She said she was walking. Just with her, walking with, with her, her baby? baby? yeah. Do you know how old the baby was? I haven't seen that yet. I didn't have detail on the baby, but she was carrying the baby, so it's just, it could have been very old. I mean, this is just a really tragic story, so if any of you think that you have problems, you don't. Um, she oh. was carrying her baby, and a Rottweiler uh, came up, I guess, and actually fought her for the baby, was tearing it out of her arms, and she and the Rottweiler were fighting over the baby, and it ripped it out of her arms and mauled the baby to death. Yeah, drug it up a driveway and mauled it to death. No reason why, no nothing. You know, they don't know, and, and they don't think it's uh, the Rottweiler's been in any altercations or whatever. I don't think that those dogs should exist. I really don't. I mean, I know a lot of you have Rottweilers, and you love them, and they're great dogs or whatever, but, you know, it just seems like we always see uh, some kind of Rottweiler story. Well, it, it, you go through phases. There was the pit bull thing for a while. And, and I know as a, I've had three pit bulls in my life. And I'm one Would of those guys. Would you ever have one with a child, though? They were with my kids all the time. Oh, no they way, dude. love my kids. Yes, they do. It, it yeah. really depends on, on the dog, the individual circumstance, and, and if that dog's treated right and cared for. And then there's dogs that are just mean, and those dogs should be destroyed. If it's a mean dog, you know. I just, I, I mean, that is, it's just, honestly, it's unfathomable. Fathomable. Yeah, yeah, to have it, to have a dog jump up and drag your baby oh off. Oh, my God, that just but horrifies also, me. That like, oh. And, I mean, I haven't heard it with this story. I can't believe the people who then defend their dog. It's yeah, like I that, hate that. If my yeah. dog even bit somebody, I'd be all for destroying Remember it. Remember the guy that had, a, that had his, his kid was walking, and I think it was a pit bull, bit, attacked his kid. And then the kid, you know, got away and was safe. And then the dad went back over there and killed the dog with a baseball bat and went to, like, prison. Right. Happened in Huntington he Beach did? a few years ago. Yeah, cruelty to animals for going back and beating the dog to death with a bat. I was like, you know, good. They were going to destroy it anyway. Well, that's like yesterday on Oprah, the lady, another lady, they had four different ladies. Um, her boyfriend molested her daughter and she shot him. Good, good for her. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Um, but, you know, she had to go in front of a, a jury and all that, but she had to say that she was uh, afraid for her life, that he came after her, right. you know, because he was afraid that he that people would find out. I don't care if he came after you or not. You know what? You molest my child, a three-year-old. Yeah, no. Don't yeah, I'm going to shoot you in the head. Absolutely, right. and you got it. Actually, I'm not going to shoot you in the head because then you just go away quickly. Yeah, a bunch of times. Uh, I, that would just be crazy. And so, I, yeah, the people that defend their dogs, or I think I told you this, there was a guy out in uh, southern Illinois, and his dog um, uh, mauled his grandson or granddaughter. I can't remember which one it was because so long ago. And the baby died, and he kept the dog. And he was out at the lake with it, and my sister's like, that's that dog that mauled his grandson, and he's kept it, and now it's tore the family apart. 
I mean, not like that, but right. you know, I mean, right. <laughs> how do you say that without saying a, right. a tore or ripped? When I had my, my uh, German Shepherd, which I have now in the K9 Academy over here in Burbank, I remember a guy had come in and his dog was mean and was biting people in the neighborhood. And he brought it into Howard to train it. And, and he put it on the leash, took it for a walk, and the dog turned on him and attacked him. And he came back in and told that guy, you destroy that dog. Go put that dog down. That's a bad dog. It's going to hurt a person. Really? And this guy is an animal expert. I mean, he trains right, dogs. Yeah. And he just knew that was a bad dog. And it was going to attack someone and hurt someone. And he told that guy, I was sitting there, destroy that dog. And if you don't, I'm going to like call the authorities and tell them you've oh, got yeah, a vicious animal. That's crazy. But there's some dogs that are just bad. Yeah, well, I think that what we saw an example of that. Um, but Ugh. to b- have your child ripped out of your arms. Oh, like, God. That's just like, I can't, I, it upsets me to no end to think of that, especially when you have a baby yeah. at home and that's immediately what you think of. Yeah. Oh. That is just. Anyway, on that happy note, uh, Jack. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Wait. Call Jimmy Jack and. I am. No, you're not. Identify. Alrighty, um, it is Wednesday, and it is, uh, God, I can't believe we're in August, you guys. That's crazy. Yeah, the third already. Yep, Man. it is, indeed do. It's um, my dad's birthday. It is? Happy Should we call birthday, him? Happy crazy fruitcake. <laughs> Should we call your dad? <laughs> no. That, Come on. That doesn't go well when I call him off the air. Come on. My dad doesn't play. Come on. I'm telling you. Come on, fruitcake. Come on. <laughs> my dad. Do it for the show. He's crazy. I know, but that's beautiful. No, it's not. Come he's, on. He's a nut job. Come on, give me the number. And he doesn't talk. I don't care. I'll this talk to him. This is the conversations I have with my father. I'm not kidding. We have to put my dad on every Rick, Friday. Your dad is funny and talkative. This is a conversation with my dad. Hello? Let me what? see. I don't believe you. Put down his phone number. Here. What are you doing? Give me his phone number. Watching TV? Yeah, no. no, we can't call Come him. It won't go well. <laughs> My on. dad doesn't play. Come on, just please. He's a fruitcake. I don't care. I'm going to ask him first. Oh, watch. And well, he'll curse. Ask him about well, we the drug a... dealers next door, uh, across the street. The ones who are... Are they drug dealers or car thieves? I can't remember. He thinks because no, they No, they're have... gone. Oh, The drug that's dealers moved out. Oh. He yeah. thought because they had a lot of different cars in their driveway that they were drug watch. dealers. This I is know. not going to go well. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> He doesn't talk to me. I'm like, hold on, I'll get your mom. That's how our conversations go. That's awesome. It's pretty oh. funny. Now I don't even offer to talk to him. I used to say, hey, where's my mom? Ask him about local news, right? Doesn't he love local news? Oh, yeah. yeah. What's his name? Jimmy. <laughs> Hello. Dad. Jimmy. Yeah. Happy, Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy <laughs> birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday, <laughs> dear Jimmy. And you're on the radio. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, Jimmy. Yeah. How old are you today? 62. 62. Wow. Isn't it time you go by the name of Jim? <laughs> no. That's his name is Jimmy. It's on his birth certificate. I know, but you don't ever drop the E? Not in Bama. Oh. Hey, Jimmy. Yeah. Uh, you proud of your son? <laughs> yeah. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> the one that's not smoking crack. Oh, yeah, that one's great. <laughs> of stench. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now, are, are you proud of him? You know, he has a show now in Los Angeles. Yeah, we're, we're big time. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, he's not much of the talker. I like Mark better. Yeah. He's in corrugated. Oh, yeah. Uh, what about the other son? He's in uh, into cardboard, huh? He sells cardboard. <laughs> Yeah, he has all those nice boxes. Does he give you free boxes? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, did uh, those drug dealers across the street move? Remember the fruitcakes? <laughs> <laughs> Dad, remember the fruitcake neighbors? <laughs> he's probably thinking, why are you screaming? He's, oh. he's not answering. Which neighbor was that? The one across <laughs> the street and over one. You know, they had a bunch of cars in their, yeah. their, their driveway? Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah. Y- yeah. They're gone. Hey, I want to know something. My dad is about your age. Mm-hmm. Why does my dad think everybody's gay? So does Jimmy. Well. Because <laughs> I heard you also call everybody fruitcakes. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> so, like, if two guys are just walking together and they're just friends, they're automatically fruitcakes? Yeah. <laughs> Only if they look like fruitcakes. Does that happen over the age of 60? Y'all think everybody's fruitcakes? Oh, this kicked in at 50. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. 
that's just the thing that happens as you go along. <laughs> now, um, the other thing is, uh, I know that you um, disciplined your children by spanking them, and I believe in that, and I'm he all for it. whooped our ass! <laughs> Jimmy, don't play! <laughs> you probably try to whoop my ass again today when I go over there. <laughs> Jimmy, do you, do you think there was ever a time where perhaps you were a little too aggressive with a little stinchy poo? No. No! <laughs> <laughs> Not like that one time in the auto shop where you threw he threw something at your head or something. Oh, he hit me with a hammer one time. Yeah. Remember that? We were working on the car, and I dropped a hammer on him, and he picked it up and hit me with it. Do you think now, looking back, Jimmy, that maybe that was just no. a, little, a little too much? Oh, 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 ask him about the time when he went to work with me, uh -huh. and he got some paint thinner poured on him, and he was wanting something to eat. So we... Stop that uh, Wiener Schnitzel. I love Wiener Schnitzel. Okay, great. as we're driving through, he is screaming to the top of his lungs and taking his clothes off. I was on fire. <laughs> I dumped five gallons of paint thinner down the in front of me. Drive through, and everybody in there looking at this crazy kid <laughs> screaming and yelling and stripping his clothes off. I was naked in the back seat, fanning my small penis with my uh, clothes that were saturated they, in paint thinner. They probably thought I was like an amber alert and, or something. No, and he was laughing to the point he couldn't stop laughing that it was funny, and I was screaming. Ah! <laughs> Jimmy, where's the sensitivity for the children? <laughs> it was pretty funny. Well, hey, I turned the water hose on him before. <laughs> before he puts me in the car, he brings me to the back of the shop and hoses me down with a hose. He puts me in the back seat and I'm just with my clothes, which are still saturated. And they're burning you? And they're burning me, so I start trying to pull my clothes off, and I'm honestly fanning my penis naked in the back seat of a car, just screaming and crying. <laughs> if only America's Funniest Home Videos was around then. <laughs> now, Jimmy, you know, and it's okay, because... I remember all of us got the the bejesus beaten out of us. Yeah, um, when, yeah, we did. Like when we were your age and stuff, it, it was just a thing. Looking back now, you still would you hit the kid with a hammer? Oh, and, oh. now hold on. There's grandkids. I'm asking Jimmy. I'll tell you this though, not the same guy. You're not even talking to the same person I knew. My dad <laughs> died a long time ago, <laughs> and uh, the grandkids is like, oh, don't be so mean to them. They're monsters. They run around terrorizing. Would you ever hit Melonhead with a hammer? No, he would never. Touch I'm Melonhead. asking. Him, would you let him oh, talk? Shut up. God. I don't remember that deal. Would I? <laughs> <laughs> it was in the front yard. We were working on a car. I was probably in junior high. You don't remember hitting him with a hammer? I dropped it on you. You were underneath there and told me, hand oh. me the hammer. I dropped it on you. You picked it up and smacked me in the leg with it. Jimmy, as far as I'm concerned, you didn't hit him hard well, enough. That's what happened. You deserve it. <laughs> 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 now, uh, you and the missus, you've been married how long? Uh, 40 years. 40 years? You happy? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's jumping for joy. And how many kids do you have? Two. Two? Isn't there one other one? Ah, uh, we don't claim that one. Oh, is that is that one son yours? <laughs> yeah, what? we don't claim him. Uh, supposed to be. I mean, <laughs> is it from your sperm? <laughs> It's his supposed to be. Yeah, but you just pretend like he doesn't exist? Yeah. What do you think went wrong? Because, you know, Stench obviously successful, the cardboard kid is successful. You know, you spanked them both and beat them with hammers, and they turned out okay. <laughs> yeah, we're fine. Look at us. <laughs> What'd you do wrong with that one? <laughs> Didn't beat them enough. <laughs> I think it was bad gene. <laughs> <laughs> because he has a different mom, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that can happen, I guess, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so do you and the missus, uh, you, you still get all, you know, kissy-wissy? Oh, shut up. Like, do you ever, you know, kiss her and stuff? Oh, man. Don't talk to this fruitcake, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> When's the last time you French kissed your oh, wife? We gotta go. <laughs> we gotta go. Oh, look at this. We're running late. <laughs> yeah. I just want to know break. when the last time you French kissed yeah. his wife. That's scar me. <laughs> When's the last time you, you made love to your wife? Oh, come on. <laughs> what? I want to know. Don't you dare answer that. I just want to know when older people, if they still get it on. I don't know. Don't want to know? Sir? Oh. Uh, I was trying to remember. <laughs> <laughs> because I just want to know if this ever stops. And my girlfriends and I were talking about that. Um, you know, my girlfriend, she's, I think, like 50 years old. And she said, oh, my God, it drives me nuts. Every time I, like, I bend over, her husband comes up behind her. And it's like, heh, heh. Does that ever stop, Jimmy? 
not with a man. Uh, yeah, you guys uh, always just come up and do that dry right. hump thing. I have a story today about an 83-year-old guy. Hold on, your dad guy. is dry humping your mother. Yeah, and I'm changing the subject. <laughs> an 83-year-old guy busted for getting a prostitute for six bucks in the news today. Hey, where did we sign year up? 19-year-old. Yeah, 19-year-old awesome. hooker for six bucks. So, Jimmy, anyway, you, what, when do you guys stop dry humping? Well, I said men never stop. <laughs> Women, when they get 50, they just shut down. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, I'm 37. That would make my mom 57 years old. <laughs> she just like, the, the, the store is closed right around 50? <laughs> That's the way it goes. Yeah. And, and so, like, now, do you, when the store goes closed at 50, do men then want to, like, wander off and, and you know, like uh, experiment with other women. I have not, a question. It's not worth the trouble. No, yeah. you just you just give up. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question. What? If if my mom were to whisper in another guy's ear at a bar, would you dump her? <laughs> Do you like know what? Jamie just did to her boyfriend. Hey, uh, Jimmy. <laughs> She's never been to a bar in her life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she hasn't. No, my mom's never drank ever. Never had a drop of alcohol. Do you know that my father never took my mother to a movie? Oh, that's weird. He, well, I talk too much. No, he said, I don't like sitting there in those uncomfortable seats. Uh, it's too goddamn expensive. Wow. Yeah. You ever take the, the missus to a movie? I was trying to think how many years ago that was. See? Something happened. Well, you can't go to the movies in Downey because it's the ghetto, and people in the ghetto talk to no, the screen. No, but the, you're missing the point. <laughs> Something weird happens after you get married where you just come home and sit down. No, no. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm married three years. I'm with you. Yeah, like something weird happens, Jimmy. Like you get married and then you just come home after work and you just sit down. I'm tired. No, we just don't like movies. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a thing. You guys too. just sit on your butts and you, you change channels. Do you, uh, you have the remote or does she? I'm sorry? Separate TVs. They, you guys have separate TVs? Yeah, you can't watch a TV with a woman. Especially you've been with her for 42 years, you'd have to kill her. <laughs> you have your own room to watch a TV? Yeah, we have TVs in every room. We got four or five TVs, I think. <laughs> so a lot of quality time spent with the missus, huh? Well, quality time is me in the den and her in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> now, are you guys like the show I Love Lucy where you have separate beds? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they do? Oh, Jimmy's a snorer. He doesn't have the, the machine I do. Where yeah. do you think I got my snoring? Why do you he... call him Jimmy instead of Papa? Well, so you know who he is. <laughs> well, I know who he is. And he's, he, he will... Snore through the walls. My dad puts it down. Yeah, but you also sleep in a separate and, and, room. And I was like that, but I have my, my breathing machine now. But I you still anymore. sleep in a separate room. Uh, on work nights, so I don't wake up her or the baby. So Monday through Friday. But on the weekends, I'm in. I'm <laughs> in. <laughs> the majority Why doesn't he just say yes? Because <laughs> it's like, I don't really, it's more so that I don't wake them up, not because of snoring anymore. But still, the answer is what? I sleep in there when I can. Oh, you're God. a fruitcake. <laughs> you are. You're so the snowboarder. I mean, it's just annoying. I like that guy. Um, Maybe you should have dumped him. Jimmy? Yeah. I don't like your son. <laughs> Slap him. Got <laughs> <laughs> a hammer? Uh, uh, Jimmy, uh, boxers or briefs? Or you go free balling? Oh. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't hear you. Oh, good. Boxers or briefs? I like briefs. Oh, uh, yeah, I yeah. Think. And do they say funny things on them or anything? Oh, that's briefs. Yeah, boxers, and if you yeah. live in Downey... No, in the, the no cr cartoon character. No, the okay. uh, crazy man that may run out in the front yard in his briefs with a gun every now and then. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you steal one of his cars. <laughs> How long you've lived in uh, have you lived in Downey? Oh, gee. 36 years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> what do you answer for him we now? We moved when I was yeah, one. It's been 30-something years. Yeah. yeah. And, and it sounds like everything's good. You still mow the lawn and all that stuff? And Oh, yeah. Yeah? Mm. Yeah, no gardeners. No gardeners. He yeah. mows his own lawn. Is Jack, do you have any questions for them, Jimmy? Them gardeners no, will steal. <laughs> Monica, do you have any questions for Jimmy? No, okay. Well, Jimmy? Okay, yeah. Um, Happy birthday to you. Yeah, happy okay, birthday. Thanks. I ordered your present. It's coming to uh, FedEx uh, probably today or tomorrow. It's a fruitcake. No, it's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I got a cool present this year online. And, and Jimmy, I like you. I, I don't know what Stench is talking about. He, he says that, that you'll cuss and, and you don't talk. <laughs> but I think that you did a fine job and, and you offered a lot to this show. I only talk to people that I like. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> I so there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jimmy. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Bye. Okay, bye. All right. Bye-bye. Ha ha. I like Jimmy. You're so nervous. You're sweating. Look at him. He's a wreck. It is so funny to see you. You're just My like. My dad. Oh. First of all, you're screaming. He normally won't talk. He likes me. He normally won't talk at all. And like, he dry humps your mom. I have a great Jimmy story. 
I brought reaches around. I brought home. Okay, when I moved to New York, I made friends with a guy, and I had no family, and a family took me in and absolutely made me a part of their family. And this guy is still like my best friend to this day. He came home, Jimmy and I did. Uh, no, my my I brought my buddy from New York to meet my parents when he was in town last. He came in, and I'm like, hey, this is my buddy Joey, Dad. Blah, blah. My dad didn't even say hello. He just looked at him and went back to the remote on the TV. And he's like, I don't think your dad likes me. I'm like, he doesn't talk much. Jimmy likes me. You did something to him. Why won't he talk to you? Uh, you know, he did the same thing to, you to my wife. You need to open up your communication when with your father. When he first met my wife, he would, didn't talk to her either. Well, you know what? When they do that, you got to go, hey, I'm talking to you. Oh, well, I could do that. Well, why don't you? I will, but he'll just ignore you. <laughs> That's so weird. My dad doesn't talk. He did talk. And everybody's a Maybe cake. he doesn't talk because you won't let him. Oh, no, he talks. Because like three times I asked him questions, you answer. When he talks, it's conspiracy. You were asking him crap about my mom. No, I was cutting you there was off. like other questions I was asking that you wouldn't let him answer. I'll and like how, how long you lived in Downey. Downey. Well, Maybe the guy's remember. just a beaten down he's, guy. He doesn't talk anymore because uh, between his wife and you. He's old. He doesn't remember how he's long he's been He's not that old. He's only 62. It's easier for me to remember the math because I've lived there since he's I only, was one. He's only 62. He's not that old. He's in good health. And he totally redid Stench's kitchen and did a great job. The oh, guy can he move guy around. Can he makes it sound amazing. elderly and like he's broken. He's not. He is broken because his wife and right. Stench won't let him get a word in edgewise. But not physically. He well, still moves around. He's for still, everyone's benefit. He, he doesn't talk because it's not worth it. You loud mouth hoser. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Jeez. Call Jimmy Jack.